atomic gigantic occasion was a sweep in Japan nation when along came a dude with an ultra attitude, a common morado who's the greatest kicker of Japan. End of all, man. Last too short now, baby. To not talk big now, baby. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a brand new bonus episode of Kaiju Conversation. I'm your host, Rex, and joined by Elijah. Isn't this a little odd? Yeah, I can tell you're, uh, this, this feels a little awkward to you. It's not that it feels awkward, it just seems different. Perhaps it feels wrong. Perhaps you're so used to me taking the lead that it's just a little weird for you. It's strange to be the the one starting off one of these one of these episodes. Strange, very strange. But yes, we are back with a brand new bonus, and this time it's well, G Fest has come and gone, and sad, as sad as I am, I was not able to make it once again. As always, like, this isn't even news. Hey, oi, I'm the host here. Shut up. Hey, I never said that. Shut up. Next year. That'll be my year. I swear to God, my year. Well, it better be. It will be. Um, I'm holding you to that. I would love for you to be here. (laughs) I would love for you to come. Imagine, like, we can do an episode together. We It would be great. Kaiju Conversation Live. In person. Next year. My year. We'll pitch that. That's going to be something we pitch. Kaiju Conversation Live. Oh my god. (laughs) That'd be interesting. Terrifying, but interesting. It'll be fun. But yes, whilst I unfortunately was doomed to spend my time down under someone here had the fortune of actually going and attending. Who? You. Me? Yes, you. Me? Yes. I went to G-Fest? So unfortunately, our guest today is a bit of a brainlet. You're a lot meaner than I am. Jeez. (laughs) It's the Rex special. I gotta imbue it with my own personality to make sure that... Where's... I may not be as high energy as you, but I gotta I gotta make up for that somehow and be meaner, I suppose, you know? Where's the riz in your charisma? I'm channeling that energy to be a horrible person. You're doing a great job. But speaking of which, I guess that's a... I think it's a good time to start transitioning into a little bit of your G-Fest journey, as I hear a little... Not sh- shortly after finishing up at Walmart uh, for the week before going to G-Fest, you had to catch a train to to oh the uh, <laughs> to Chicago, from what yeah. I understand. How'd yes. That go? So every year for G-Fest specifically, I do this thing where I take the train. It's actually a little bit cheaper than driving. It's right. only like $50 cheaper and gas then like it's it's fifty dollars more in gas than riding the train and it's about the same time depending on what route you take this train ride is 17 and a half hours so it takes longer but it's cheaper so i it's just kind of my thing i get to bring an extra bag that's basically empty so it's a lot of fun so i get i you know i've been packing i had been packing like i had my suitcases out a month prior i had been packing like a week or two prior like i thought i had everything packed so i get everything packed i get in my car i start my day i go i have lunch with like i i I worked the day before i got i did everything i needed the day prior i have i actually had to create a whole itinerary of like i woke up at like 8 a.m finished my packing, showered, got dressed. Then I had to go like get a, a, an advance on my next paycheck for my for my vacation. Then I had to go Yeah, I've seen your itinerary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I went I went to meet up with my mother and my uncle. We had lunch before I got on my trip. Then I got like my whole money, like I had to break my money down cuz I didn't want to take all hundreds. I didn't want to 
Like I always break it down oh, so I have yeah, enough. Don't cash. be that guy. Don't be that guy to bring all the hundreds. <laughs> so like I brought, I brought tons of fives, tons of ones, tens, twenties, a couple fifties, some hundreds. I bring it all. You know, I, I want to have enough so the vendors are never like, I don't have change. I'm sorry, I can't. I, you can't sell this to you. And so I left like a two hour time gap between getting my money on my itinerary and going to the station. Hmm. So I thought I'd have enough time. I was planning for my trip to go start at 420. Well, so the the, the lunch runs an hour over. It's fine. Uh-huh. I gave myself plenty of time. Then we like get the money situ- situation taken care of, which then takes a little bit longer. Then we go drop off my car and take me. So while we're on our way, I check my train ticket. I'm supposed to be leaving at four. <laughs> so we're 20 minutes behind what we should be. We make it there at four, like four o'clock on the dot. So I'm like able to make it there. They had already closed it. So I'm late. I can't get to the train. And they're like, if you go to another stop, they'll help you. So they gave me like two stops ahead, which is like in 40 minutes, it's going to be here. You have to go here. So I call, I get my ride back. I throw my stuff in the car. We gun it for the next station I'm, I can meet at. We get to that station. They're already gone. So we drive out another 30 minutes to the next station. So this is four stops into my train ride. I We somehow, like we were going 100 miles an hour on like a 45, like felony level speeding we make it we beat the train by like five minutes it's a miracle so i get i get on the train i get my stuff put up i'm on my way perfect i take that time then to uh i I wrote an article for article for kaiju united about the upcoming monsterverse director i wrote that out got that done i called nathan i'm trying to think who else i I did one other thing. I like finalized another thing and sent it off. And then I just kind of vibed for like the next two hours. I think I was listening to, I was, I was doing study. I did it. I took a nap. I did some study for my article. And then I like listened to giant monster BS. And then we got to uh, my next stop, got to St. Louis, had a, an hour layover there. I think I called you. I believe you did, yes. Yeah, until the train came. No, I didn't. I didn't call you there. I just vibed because it was only an hour. Then we had to get on a bus. I don't remember where you called me. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to get on a bus. So then I rode, it was actually a van. I rode a van and I like tried to sleep the whole time listening to our Whale God episode. But like I faded in and out the whole time. I don't think I actually slept. And then once we got to the next stop, I think that's when I called you. It was like a two hour, three hour wait. I called you, chit chatted with you, waited for the next train. Right as I'm about to board, like the person stops me and it's like, you have four bags here. Where do you like, where is three or it was, you have three bags here. Where, where in this is there only two? She was kind of rude to me. And I was like, cause I had just read like at the station, there was like a, you have a two bag policy, but I actually went to the station that I came from like way, like a week prior. And I was like, Hey, so I'm going on vacation. I have a backpack. I have a large bag and I have two other roller bags. Is that okay? And they're like, yeah, you can actually take three. You're fine. I don't know if they like ignored the part where I said I had a, a backpack or what? but she was like, why didn't you check this back? I'm like, nobody told me like I would have, but nobody's told me anything. Like there's not a single conductor or station master from getting on the station to getting off the station, to getting on the van, to getting off the van, to being at the station that has mentioned anything on my way back. Nobody mentioned anything. So it's like, I don't, I don't like, I don't know if everybody's loosey goosey with the rules or what. Right. But I'm definitely, I'm going to, next time I take a trip and I have to take that many bags, I'm going to triple check because the last thing I need is middle of my trip, like (laughs) getting stopped and being told, you can't have this bag. Well, what do you want me to do with it? 
Oh, and have an you un- want that to happen. Yeah. Just, just some extra, extra fun. Yeah. But I get on that train. It's go. I go to Chicago during the time I, I take a nap. Uh, I actually get woken up from my nap. They're like, can you move your bag so somebody can sit here? So I do that. And like, I just struggled sleeping the rest of the time. But in the morning, I made it to Chicago, got off, walked to Clinton, the stop on Clinton for the Blue Line L train. That's Chicago's public transport. And then I rode to to Rosemont, which is about an hour. Got off and I want to say I met Jacob. Jacob Lingle of Kaiju United first. Nice. And uh, yeah, we, we chilled until Nathan, Nathan Marchand and Jared, his brother. They, they came and we chilled. And I want to say his new co-host for his podcast, Henshin Power V3. He was there. Nice. And from there, I don't remember. I don't remember who showed up next. I want to say it was Kim. Kim. No, I met Kim. Kim was before Nathan. I met Kim first. Kim and Roy, her husband. And they were kind enough to let me put my stuff in their in their room for the for the day. And so I got to chat with them, hang out, and then Nathan showed up. And then we ended up going to the the Pickwick after that. Nice. What movies did you see? So on Thursday, so I, I, I traveled Wednesday, got there Thursday. Thursday's when they do their two double features. So the first double feature, which started at one, I believe it was, was Godzilla or Mothra versus Godzilla and Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla. Got there, met with Danny and Robert. We all sat together. We watched those two. And then after that, Nathan does his Giordano's lunch, which was all of us, Kim, Roy, Danny, Robert, Nathan, Jared, me. We got a deep dish pizza. I got some calamari. We did that. We ended up running late. Um, oh, and, and his co-host for his new show. Uh, his name escapes me. It's I know it. It's just I don't remember. It's on me. I'm a bad person. <laughs> Yes, you are. But we ended up being late to the next showing, but we still made it, which was The Return of Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Now, these films, all first times for me in terms of theaters. So I got to add Mothra vs. to my list and Mechagodzilla, which means I've seen all but Gigan on the big screen in terms of the 70s stuff. Hate you. Which is really cool. Uh, I actually have a list... I'm going to, I'll just share it now because I only saw one other one outside of these. So it's not like I'm spoiling the other film I obviously saw. But I've now seen Godzilla 54, Mothra vs. Ghidorah, Ebra, Destroy Monsters, Hetera Megalon, Mechagodzilla, Terror, Return of Godzilla, Space Godzilla, 98 2000, Against Mechagodzilla, Tokyo SOS, Final Wars 2014, Shin, King of the Monsters, Kong, Minus One, and New Empire. So I've actually seen more Godzilla films in theaters than I haven't, which is really cool. I hate you. <laughs> but we we saw those. We got back. We saw The Return of Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, both of them being my first Heisei films in theaters. Really cool there. And then we we got to go back to the hotel. I think I I, we che- I got checked in. I got my stuff. I took my stuff up. I had my own room this year. First time for that. It was really nice. I really enjoyed it. Damn, so that was... Is that all that happened on Thursday? I think so. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, because once I got back, um, Jacob actually had to take my stuff to his room because Kim and Roy went to bed. So <laughs> Jacob had my stuff, so I checked in. Jacob brought his stuff up with me. I he helped me get settled in. I showed him what stuff I brought for the con. That way, we we knew what we were doing. We had a little plan. We not well, not a little, but we had our plan for what we were we were going to film on Friday. We actually met with some of the GFest committee before on Thursday to ham- to nail that out and get it figured out, which was really good. And yeah, I think after that, I just kind of got things organized and I, I'm pretty sure I just went straight to bed because I had a long day. Mm. 
<laughs> Fair enough. Well, I suppose then. How about the how about the first day of the con? What what happened there? Well, I had to wake up early. I had a meeting. I can't talk about it. Unfortunately, there's some things at G Fest this year I, I I really can't talk about. But I had a meeting, and then it's unfortunate because after... it's an exciting meeting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I had a meeting, and as soon as that was over, I had to go. We uh, did some footage for the dealer's room. We shot some B-roll in Kaiju Island. I got to meet all the amazing artists down there. Really great guys. I, I had a lot of fun being down there filming with them. And then after that, if I remember correctly, I transitioned into doing the autographs room. I think I kind of just walked around a little bit. Uh, chatted with Jacob and Nick and David, Team Kaiju United, great guys. And then after that, I went and I did some some autographs. So who did you who did you get some autographs from then? So I got Rie Ota, and I did oh, Alan Paragon. Henry. <laughs> yeah, Baragon suit actress and Kong and Scar King motion capture artist. I got nice, them. Nice. I. I was I had Jeffrey on my list, but I needed to get my book for him. And I had Toshimiki on my list as well, but I needed to get my Godzilla Final Wars completion book for him. So I got her autograph. I got his autograph. I didn't get a picture with him because it was like $20 more. And if I'm going to have to pay extra for a photo, it's like, I'm good. <laughs> I don't, I didn't really, I mean, I had the money to do it. I probably should have, but. I just oh. got an autograph, which I gotta figure out where those are. Real. I think I know I put them in something. I want to say I put. I think I might have put them in my Final Wars completion book, but I know they're they're either in that or my program book. Yeah. But I was kind of, <laughs> I was kind of surprised that the autograph room had no lines. Nice. I, I actually contemplated going back up, getting my Final Wars completion book, bringing it down and like just getting him to sign it then. But I was like, you know what? I got two autographs already. I'll like I'll spread it out. Mm. So I did that. And then the place was crowded. It was awful. I've heard there was a lot of people this year. I've heard it, from the sounds of it. It sounds like each year there's been more and more people. Yes, this was the biggest year for G-Fest. There were a little over 7,000 attendees, which is almost double last year. Oh, wow. It was, there were lines out the wazoo. Like, I didn't even get my resi like my badge from registration until... Registration? Nice. I'm sorry, I'm struggling. <laughs> I, I, didn't get, I didn't get that until I want to say it was Saturday. Friday or Saturday, like Saturday afternoon. Or no, it was Friday. It was like late Friday because the line was so long, like you couldn't get, it would take you hours to get in there. Between that and the dealer's room, it's like, I'm just going to hold off. Like I have no reason to, I was like, I'm going to hold off. I couldn't go anywhere. So like I got those signatures. I went up, I put them up. I, I bought the, no, that was later on. I got their signatures and then I think I just kind of roamed around. I think I, I just did for a little bit. And then mm. I had my first two panels of the year. I did Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla with Daniel DeMana and Matt Frank. And then I did nice. Godzilla minus one with Nick Sides, Jacob Lingle, Nick Crispino, and myself, which were back to back. Mm. How'd that go? Mechagodzilla went really well. I think we all had fun. Matt Frank ended up drawing an idea of a Tesla truck Mechagodzilla. Because of that, <laughs> it was really fun. And then Minus One went really well. Huge crowd. It was, oh, it was, I'd imagine so. It was a lot of fun. And uh, that got recorded. The Minus One panel got recorded. I don't know when it goes live, but it will be available for people to watch. And I got a lot of people were complimenting me throughout the weekend about both of those panels. And I'm trying to think what else happened. I think that was about it. I think after that, I had a little bit of time. I think I just chit-chatted with people. And then I went and I did arcade coverage for Kaiju United, which was really cool. I had never been in that room before. So I got to go yeah. enjoy that. 
No, I do. I, I do. That's one of the rooms I want to visit when I go. <laughs> it's really fun. I want to it's see really what some fun. of the classic Godzilla and all those arcade games they got. I love, I love an, <laughs> a good arcade. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm trying to remember what I did after that. I think so. Friday night turned out to be a bit crazy. We ended up doing for Kaiju United. We did an interview. Oh. I think no. Wait, did we? No, no. It kind of gets blurry because my agenda did not end up being what we did. I want to say I might have. I might have went to lunch. I think I, I. I think I went to lunch, and then we had the opening ceremonies, which I actually filmed most of it. There was a Kaiju Island of Fire promo teaser trailer that showed during that. They showed the newest Dojo Studios movie short film, which Dojo Studios is the in-house GFS production company. Yeah. And they introduced all of the all of the special guests. They all came up and talked. There, Jeffrey Engels announced that Luminous Fairies of Mothra got approved from the copyright holders. Beautiful. So so next is on to designing the cover art, getting Beautiful. The, <laughs> getting the afterword written, and then getting it sent off to get printed and copied and promotion starts that's exciting stuff right there yeah yeah really exciting i'm trying to think if anything else happened really i hear i hear you guys saw godzilla final wars there i hear that was a an experience <laughs> yes got to see final wars in theaters i sat with I hate the, you. just the, just letting you know i hate you i, I hate sat with the, about you <laughs> i hate you i sat with the kaiju united crew plus danny it was packed. We actually, it was like the line was crazy. We ordered our tickets actually online, thanks to yeah. Nick Crispino, which saved us because the line ended up getting cut and you could not come in. So because I got my tickets early, I got to be in. We had decent seats. Actually, our entire group got to come in, like my podcaster group and the Kaiju United group. We all got to go in. We all watched it packed theater like every seat was packed they had to turn away people they actually had to start assigning people seats because they just didn't have room and it was a lot of fun i enjoyed it it. is it normal or not normal in america to assign seats so at the pickwick normally it's not assigned seats at Uh, your smaller theaters it's not normal to do that at your right, right, AMCs, yeah. at your bigger like cinema chains, it's absolutely normal. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, it's the same as here. Then, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. No, because I saw I saw a photo. I don't know if it was from Final Wars, but I saw a photo of you and a bunch of other people like outside the Pickwick Theater. Yes, like, good, like ton of you. Like, yeah, probably, so, I don't know, like fifty people at least. <laughs> as soon as the the showing ended and we all walked out, they were like, "Let's get a group photo." So I I got in on a group photo, which I learned during this this weekend. I one hundred and ten percent have a pose that I just go to. What is it? Your peace sign pose? Yeah, my peace sign pose where I I I put my left hand up. I do the peace sign. And I like kind of tilt my head back. I kind of stand you know what's funny? up. The other day, I realized my kind of go-to pose in photos is kind of like the opposite of yours. <laughs> what it's is like it? The inverse, where like you do your peace sign, where it's like you're pointing uh, your hands to, like your palm to the camera. Mine is basically the palm is to myself. <laughs> And then I realized in a photo on like while you guys were at G Fest, while I was with a group of my friends, I realized that one of my friends who was next to me in the photo do, does the exact same pose as me, but with the exact opposite hand. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wow, get your own pose, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was it was a ton of fun. I I learned that I have a pose. And I, I use that pose a lot this weekend. I mean, fair. Mine is just the go-to now because I have no clue what else to do. Too, That's too fair. Much, it's too much to come up with anything else. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm with you there. And I think after that, I, I don't remember doing anything. I'm, I think I might have chilled in the lobby and talked with some people. Mm. I think I don't remember. I think, or I might have just went straight to bed, to be honest. 
Fair, fair. I mean, Final Wars, uh, that, is, that would be one way to end, end the night, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think it might have, or I might have hung out with Danny a little bit and then went to bed. Yeah. <laughs> then what about Saturday, I believe? Day two. <laughs> See, on my agenda, I have a lot m- less, but I know for a fact that I did a lot more. I'm like, I'm trying to remember what I did. I'm So I was supposed to get he- Alan Henry's autograph. That ended up being Toshio Miike. I got his autograph on my Final Wars completion book. So now I have the suit actor for Godzilla, the suit actor for Kaiser, and the suit actor for Manila, plus Don Fry, and now Toshio Miike. So I've got five autographs on that thing. And then I also think I got Jeffrey's signature then. I think I did. And then we set up a lunch and we went to uh, set up like a coffee for later. So I got I got that. And then I want to say after that, I had to go to the model thread, which I met up with my friend Nicholas who actually did the the artwork for G-Fest this year. He did that. So I filmed his model thread, and then I did an interview with him where we we covered uh, like him being a modeler, him being a filmmaker and whatnot, had some really good chats. Oh, yeah. He's a really cool guy. I saw him throughout. We actually met at the Yuzo premiere, so like we knew each other. <laughs> so it was really cool getting to actually meet up again and, and talk about stuff. And then, if I remember correctly, after that, I just kind of roamed a bit. I might have went into the the dealer's room and bought a couple things and took it up. I don't really remember. Again, like, I don't remember. Like, this whole... On, here's the unfortunate thing. This weekend was get camera, go film. Somebody says hi to you. You say hi back. You know each other. You chit-chat briefly. Somebody says, whoa. This is going to be a little weird. Whoa, you're Elijah. Can I get a photo with you? Hey, how's it going? Yes, absolutely. I know Kaiju Dork from our server. He was there, Alex. He stopped me and said hi. I know he's posted the picture. I haven't got sent it, but I, I really want that picture. A couple other listeners stopped and said hi to me. Really awesome. Got photos with them. Other friends. I, mean, I that, the like, person who won the costume parade is someone who's in the server as well (laughs) that's oh that's why she looked familiar oh (laughs) i literally talked to her and i had no idea oh my god (laughs) i'm an awful that's funny anyways (laughs) but yeah no it just i i did i feel bad like i was really exhausted i was busy like when i work i'm always like dialed in working like right. i would i feel bad for any fan who saw me and i just kind of felt I, I i'm a little self-conscious i feel like i was like really zoned out but it was like really cool and honestly surreal like i i do want to bring this up like speaking as as somebody who has been podcasting for five years now who's also done short films and I've written articles and I've worked on a magazine. I've done an actual film. I've done Blu-ray bonus features. It's really surreal when somebody walks up to you who you've never met and says, are you Elijah? Right. I, I love your work. Can I get a photo with you? Like that means the absolute world to me. Mm. It's so, it, it's just so surreal. Like I would be walking and like, I would have people stop me. And asked to get a photo with me. Mm. And I just, it's so, it it really touches my heart. Like, honestly, it's so surreal. Mm. I I think that's the best way, like, not in a million years did I think I would be somebody people would deem cool enough to get a photo with. Like, that's just something that really is near and dear to my heart that I really appreciate. Mm. And I don't know if I could ever faithfully articulate just how much that means to me because it means all the world to me it really does that that just made me feel all the more better and i don't i don't want to say it gave me validation but it it makes me feel like i'm doing something i'm doing something right and i i appreciate that to everybody who got a photo with me to everybody that stopped and said hi to every like it it means the honest to god 
world to me. And I'm really thankful for, for those moments. Mm. But speaking on stuff like the costume parade, how, how was all that? Like, I, I I did see like obviously the the evolved Godzilla girl. She's in the Discord server. There was a really cool Mech Godzilla, but were there any other cool ones? I think there was. Yeah, a there was. Scene. So, okay, another full disclosure. I don't remember the the costume contest. So we at Kaiju United. One of the things we were supposed to do is cover the costume contest. Yeah. So we had to get this rig set up with a white sheet and the cameras placed. I was camera B. I was the camera B person by the door. So we not only had to make sure people were not bumping into things, not bumping into the background. We had to make sure we got photos. So it was like in a hard hour and a half worth of like photos, 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 next photos, photos. Like it just boom, boom, boom. Like it was just, we were, we were a machine. Yeah. And so I don't honestly, there were a lot of really good ones. Like, I know that for a fact. There was a nice Muto one. There were some good Scar King ones, Mechagodzilla, Hedera, Mothra. There was a ton of amazing work. Truly remarkable work. I just don't remember which one specifically. Because I was busy getting photos of all of them to really, like, remember them. (laughs) Now, all of this stuff will get posted. And then I'll be like, oh, I remember taking this photo. Oh, I remember that. But it was a lot of fun. It was really cool being able to like be like there was a crowd in front of us watching us get this setup done and like photographing everything. It was really cool. We unfortunately missed the Mangled Skyscraper Award. I don't know who got that this year. Surely somebody can correct that and What's tell me. What's the Mangled Skyscraper Award? Sorry. <laughs> so it's an achievement G Fest hands out to to recipients for their work in the community or on official works. You know, Matt Frank's gotten ah, it. Gotcha. TJ Storm got it. A lot of cool people have gotten that award. So we did that, and then we wrapped on that. And as soon as we wrapped up on all that, I had to run and do Blood Spawn, which is an indie film. That it got its uh, first test screening at G-Fest, so I got to attend that. And then I got to interview and hang out with all the directors for a while, which was really, nice. really cool. So we did that, and then after that, it was like, go up and go to bed. Like, I was, <laughs> I had been, I actually, on all of, all these days, I forgot to eat. And so, like, eating My was like a, God. like, a, like, last minute thing each day. Yeah, everyone listening, remember... There's a this guy's a mental patient. No, like I think the only day where like dinner actually was something I did was Sunday <sighs> and and Thursday. Mm. Like those were the only two days I actually ate. Every other day was like I don't have time to eat. I got to I mean, I like guess when you're working this. on like doing all the like Kaiju United videography and all that. I suppose it's like you don't thinking about eating or being no. hungry you don't have time and, to be hungry <laughs> right and and it was nothing jacob even said jacob was like dude stop like you're good but i i'm i'm somebody that when i get a job i do it so the whole time i'm at g fest i'm taking videos i am i'm attending panels i'm going through the dealer's room i'm chatting it up with people i'm taking photos with people i'm getting autographs yeah, I'm running around doing all this. I'm doing interviews for people. We actually we got to interview the uh, Jared Kurchevsky and we got to interview the nice. uh, writer of Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong. Nice, so like nice. we were doing all that stuff. So it's like I didn't I don't have time to eat. I was going to eat at the Red Bar, the the restaurant in the in the, in the shop. But I was like, I don't got time for this. Like I'm I need to go to Blood Spawn in ten minutes. <laughs> so i went down I, I i sat next to one of the next to avery the publicist for blood spawn avery's a great human being so i've heard and we we watched the film i took my notes then i got to interview them and i learned a lot of cool things and then after that i went to bed and got ready for for sunday mm-hmm. so speaking of sunday i hear first off i hear that your short film was shown there. I'm sure it was quite exciting for you. 
Yeah, I so I started the day off with the Kaiju Writers panel. I believe that was that day. It might have been no, it was Saturday that that was. I started my day off doing that on Saturday, which had Danny, mm. Donnie, and Nathan. So I got yeah. to enjoy that. I don't remember what I did Sunday. There was something before the actual showing, but I don't remember what it was. Was it like an autograph or something? Or? I don't think so, because I had all my autographs done on Saturday, I ah. think. But anyways, I, I know I bought stuff. Um, I'm actually going to talk about all that stuff real quick, because... Okay. Uh, that, so, <laughs> I was wondering about all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So at, I'm trying to remember what all I... So at Beast from the East, I actually bought Naranga and... Or no, I didn't buy those... At Showcase Daikaiju, they were doing a buy one, get one 50% off Bandai sale. So I got Naranga and Gabora from Shin Ultraman. Yeah. At the G-Fest official merchandise table, I got three issues of G-Fan, plus I got uh, the t-shirt and the coffee mug, as I always do. At the G uh, Titanic Creations table, I got Soul War, the graphic novel, and I got a Titanicus plushie. Nice. Nice. At Beast from the East, I got Shin Kamen Rider and Shin Kamen Rider Ichigo, correct? Yeah, uh, Nigo. Ichi Ichi Nigo. Ichigo and Nigo. Ichigo and Nigo. Yep. One, Kamen Rider one and two. You know. <laughs> yes, I got those from from Beast from the East. Well, those like Band Pestos or the Bandai's. Or Bandai's. Ah, uh, oh, like the Movie Monster series ones. Yes. Yes. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. I got uh from the. Got from the Japan Legends store for the autographs table. I got the Godzilla Minus One Theater program. Nice. And then I also got from Toku Toy Town, I got a Medical Jet Jaguar Safubi, a Candy Variant Hetera, a Megalon, and a Mecha Godzilla Safubi. And now I have all of the Safubi for the 70s films besides King Caesar. So that's the only Safubi I'm needing now is the King Caesar, and I have the 70s kaiju line. Nice. I also got some comics, some Godzilla, War for Humanity, Skate or Die, 70th Anniversary, Kingdom of Monsters, a Gangster and, Gangster and Goliaths, and the Here There Be Dragon Sons of something. And I also got a, a couple of things from Seismic Toys. They, uh... They had a little like blind bag, which had like a symphonic fury poster, a Fukube CD, stuff like that. And I also got the the bird from uh, Orochi, the eight headed dragon. I forget its name, but I got that from Toku Toy Town as well. Mm. So I got a lot of cool stuff. Um, I actually got two Super 7s from my friend Eric, Eric Stolp of Monsters with Attitude and Bearded Kaiju Reviews. We did a little trade. And oh, yeah. And that was a lot of fun. We also met, I met Luis, as I uh, have our artist. Oh, oh yeah. Who did, who did the Frank, uh, the Convies Award. He actually gave me the original drawing for that, which was really cool. <laughs> I met him on Friday, and then I saw him again on Sunday, mm. which was right after the video contest, which segues back into the video contest. So my short film, Edo Kami no Gyakushu, had its world premiere at the contest. Congrats. It was shown, actually it was one of the first four shown, which was really good because Danny and Nathan both had panels at noon, so they wanted to go. Danny actually worked <laughs> on it. He did the monster sounds and the suit design for the film. Yeah. But they all got to see it. Kim was there. She actually did a voice in the film, which was really cool. Roy, her husband, got to be there. Robert got to be there. It was really cool. Um, hmm. My two of my actors and my cameraman, along with his family, got to be there as well. They watched the nice. premiere. And I'm trying to think who else. I want to say Luis was there and maybe one or two other people I know. But it got shown. And unfortunately, once again, it did not win. Uh, well, we can't all be winners, unfortunately. No, and, and I'm going to, I'll just say this here. I guess this is the announcement for this. I don't know. I'm done with the video contest. Mm -hmm. Um, 
this is going to sound really cocky, and I, I don't mean to sound really cocky, but there's just something about G-Fest not acknowledging a film with a production budget. Like, I, I, I put a lot of money into it, um, more so than any other film there. And I'm not saying money makes everything, but I'm saying that production value does show. Mm. And the fact that a film with a production value did not win one of the five spots kind of tells me a lot. Mm. And so I'm, I think with this, I have a pretty, it, there's a very clear message to me that G Fest does not want to acknowledge that. Why? I mean, sure, maybe the argument could be made that my stuff is not amateur. I would consider myself an amateur, but. If G Fest does not, I guess I'm I'm flattered at that. So, yeah, that that happened. It is but what it is. It is what it is. So after that, I believe I just got to go look in the in the dealer's room a bit. And so after, or, yeah, I think so. So after that, I got to go. I was the videographer for the MonsterVerse panel for Kaiji United. Nice. I also got my my two actors and my my cameraman to sign the script. I brought the screen new script for Edo Kami to the festival to get signed. And so after all that, um, I did that, and I actually needed. I had my videographer go up and get my Final Wars T shirt because as soon <laughs> as that panel was over, I had to run over to do a Godzilla Final Wars panel. So I, he came down with my shirt. I got that. I got to, you know, I got to film or not film. I got to go do that. It got recorded. So that should be getting released soon um, on the feed and on our YouTube channel. So we did Final Wars. And then as soon as Final Wars ended, I actually had to run down to the film festival room. I was asked to film something. I don't know if I can talk about it, but you can put two and two together if you were there. So I had uh, Roy, Kim's husband, was nice enough to do the filming for me there. And so he filmed that while I did the Godzilla at 70 panel, where I got to be on with Kevin Horn, Daniel DeManna, Nathan Marchand, and Jeffrey Angles. We nice. got up there, we got to talk about Final Wars. We were the last panel of the day, pretty much. We were the second to last on the block. And then after that, I got to go. I had coffee with Jeffrey Angles after that, which was really fun. And then from there, I think I, I got to relax and chat with Kevin Derendorf, Kyle Berg, Avery, and a couple other people. And I did that until like two in the morning. <laughs> I, I feel bad. I was supposed to go hang out with Nathan, Kim, Danny, Robert, and all of them. I actually went and had dinner with them. And then they went to their after party, but I was busy. And so I couldn't make it. And I feel bad because I was going to go down and hang out with them. But I just got pulled away. And then like Matt Frank saw me. And so Matt Frank pulled me and we were chit chatting about about the panel and whatnot. So it was a lot of fun. There was no Kaiju Kim stream this year, which is perfectly understandable. But I, I was planning to do that if 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 it was going to happen. But it didn't. It is what it is. And then from there, it was go up and uh get everything packed i think i called you i don't remember but i got everything packed for the following day because the following day i was gonna leave right i hear there's a little bit of a story with your leave though <laughs> oh god yes so i got up i took a nathan had already left nathan had to leave early but i was gonna leave with kim roy robert danny jacob and and Nick and whatnot. So we we're getting ready. Every I have everything packed. Like it's in my room waiting. I'm just yeah. waiting on Danny to be ready so I can take my stuff from my room, go down and check out. And I had to leave by about 1230. We were going to go to the mall, come back, and then I was going to hop on the light rail, ride down to the station and get ready to go home. As I'm chilling with Kim and Roy, I get a text message from Amtrak that says my train has been canceled oh, due to no. technical issues. So I'm like, okay, fine. I guess I'll just leave later this evening. So I go on there to change. Like, it's like you can get a refund or you can get a new train. 
I go on there to get the later train that happens in the evening, and they're like, no trains available. I'm like, crap. What am I, like, I can't check in. I don't have the money. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> so, so what like, did Wait. you do? <laughs> yeah, so I I hung out with Kim and Roy, and then Danny and Robert, and then Jacob, Adam. Uh, Nick had already left. Uh, Jacob, Adam, and David. We went to go to Mitsubiya. It's like a Japanese store. We we had lunch there. We hung out there. Then we came back. So what ended up happening? I called Kyle, Kyle Bird, Kaiju Transmissions, who may I say is my MVP for the weekend. Mm-hmm. Kyle came in clutch for me. He's such a good guy. He let me put his stuff in his room so that it wouldn't get stolen so his stuff my stuff was in his room until i got back after we did mitsuya uh they came back i hung out jacob left david left adam left they all left eventually i was by myself some guys who had seen one of my pot uh, one of my panels chilled and chatted with me and then matt walsh friend of the show matt walsh shows up He's like, hey, what are you up to? I'm like, I'm just vibing here. I got nothing to do till till Kyle comes back from hanging out with his family. He's like, hey, let's go get a drink. So we go, we get a drink together. We chill. Then we go to, you know, we chat about the weekend and whatnot. Then he's like, hey, let's go to FYE. So we go to FYE. We go to a mall, hang out there. Then we go to, uh, I go to, we go to Barnes and Noble. So during all of this, I end up buying a couple of Criterions to get Kage Musha and drive my car. Ooh, and then, yeah, nice, yeah. Nice. I really enjoyed driving my car. I think you'd like that. And then I got from the Japanese store, I got the Snow Ghost and other Japanese stories, which is the Yuki Ona story. And I also got Kaiju Number 8, Volume 5. I also got the GXK Kong and Scar King chocolate bars and the soda which was really cool. And then I also got a book, 101 Things I Learned in Film School, which was really cool. <laughs> and I should also say I got Donnie Winter's poem books. I got him to sign those as well. Um, I also got one of Jeffrey's books. He signed both that and my Godzilla novel, which was really fun. Nice. And so Matt and I hung out till about 8 p.m. Then Kyle was like, hey, let's just vibe and chat in the lobby, which we did. So while we're chilling... A tornado warning, or not a warning, a tornado watch alert comes over our phone, and we're like, should we? Like, it's like, Ain't seek, no way. It's like, seek shelter right now. It's like, should we be worried? Like, nobody else is freaking out right now. So, like, a few minutes go by, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, Kyle, is that, is that rain? Like, it was so weird. It was like, that doesn't even sound like rain. And then suddenly, it's like, everybody's running downstairs. And, like, we go down, he calls his family, they come down, like, the wind is blowing, like, things are, like, flying in the air. It's like, oh, my God, there's a tornado or something going on right now. (laughs) So we all have to go into the basement, and, like, we're just there for a little bit, and then about 15 minutes later, everything's over, and we go back up. We're like, geez, like, this is a wild evening. Man, this is crazy promotion for that new Twister movie. (laughs) As somebody made that joke, I think it was Nathan. I think Nathan called me. Yeah, because I was like, dude, I was like, guys, where's like, there's a tornado happening right now. I was like, there's no way my train gets canceled, a tornado hits, I'm going to die in this building. So we go back what up. A, what an end to G-Fest. Eh? I know. So we go back up and we're we're chit-chatting again. And then all of a sudden, lights start blaring and over the intercom is, we have an emergency. Please evacuate the building. And it's the fire alarm. The fire alarms are going off, for God's sake. I'm like, oh my God, there's no way this is happening right now. Oh, also during the the whole tornado thing, like the power was going out too is wild. But uh, yeah, then we have to leave the building because there's a fire. So that all happens, and then it's a false alarm. The fire department comes. It's crazy. And I I told Kyle, like, the only thing left is suddenly we hear a pop, pop, pop. 
and like we have to evacuate because there's an active shooter. It was crazy. Man. So don't you just hate Mondays? God, it was awful. <laughs> so then Kyle and I hang out till about two PM or two AM when he has to go to bed. I get my stuff. I hide out in the lobby of the Hyatt, hoping to God that it's late enough that they're not going to be like, Are you like what are you doing here? So I move all of my stuff to this corner and I like not off to sleep, but I keep myself awake enough. So like if anybody comes up, I can say, oh, I'm waiting for an Uber. So I set an alarm for 6 a.m. Nobody messes with me. Thank God. Like nobody takes my stuff. Everything's fine. So then I get ready. Like six o'clock comes. I, I get on. I'm, I go out to the station. I get on the L train, ride to the ride to Saint to the U- Union Station in Chicago. As I'm riding, there's this other guy who's also going to Union Station who also has bags. So he asks for help on the in like the subway going going out up to the up to the you know to the street to walk to Union Station. So I help him out, and he's like, "Where are you going?" So we chit chat about that. And then we just decide to hang out for the next hour until his train shows up. Like we get we get breakfast together. We're just talking about our lives. It's like I, I've known this dude for twenty minutes, and we're acting like we know each other. Aver- and average average day of my life. I know, right? And so so his name is Valentine. He's from Kenya. He moved to America. He uh, he's going. He was in. Uh, college. He was uh, he was getting he was about to go back to get his bachelor's degree in biology, a bioscience bioscientist, biomedical. Um, or? Yeah, biomedical science. That's what it was. Right. Yeah, I know a couple people doing that. What a G. <laughs> yeah, and and so he was he was on his way to Chicago, like somewhere in Illinois, to meet some family, and yeah, he was taking the train. Really cool guy. Uh, we talked a little bit and then his train showed up and then uh, I saw him off. I helped him get on his train and then, and then I was by myself again. I called you, but the reception was so bad. I decided to hang up on you. I was tired and grumpy and not wanting to deal with it. Rude. <laughs> and then I called Danny and I talked to Danny. Eventually my train showed up. So I got in the line. I got on there. I was like, Danny, I just got my ticket checked. I'm going to bed. So then I just slept the rest of the train ride. Like, I slept the whole time. Yeah. I was told that when we hit St. Louis, I was going to have to, like, change cars because they wanted to keep everybody in in these two cars. But they just didn't wake me up. Like, St. Louis came and went, and I never got asked to move. Yeah. So that happened. I, I slept, and then... And then I woke up like 20 minutes, 30 minutes before like my stop and I just waited and then my stop came. I got off and I got in a car, I got to my car and then I drove home. And as of last night, I got my backpack and my small bag unpacked. Tonight I got my, my collection bag unpacked. I still have all my filming equipment to unpack. I'm going to do that tomorrow. Mm. Damn. And so that's G Fest. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much it. All Monsters Attack got announced, which is really fun. Nice. And and that's uh I don't know, is I feel like that's a lot of things. Did I is there anything I didn't cover? I don't know, but that does lead me to the question, what would you say was probably the best part of this G Fest? What was the highlight? Oh oh god. Um the <laughs> best part. Honestly, getting to meet David Scrivani of Talking Toku, he's a really cool guy. He was really fun to hang out with. Donnie, Donnie Winter, finally getting to hang out with him was a joy. Uh, Seeing my short film premiere. Oh, actually, here is the best thing that happened at G-Fest. So my short film premiered. I filmed the live reaction. After that, I, I packed my stuff up and I left. As I was getting my stuff unpacked, this lady comes out and she she walks up to me. She's like, excuse me, this is going to sound weird, but was that your short film? I said, yeah, that, that was my short film. And she says, can you can you wait just a minute? I've got my son wants to meet you. I'm like, OK, sure. So 
I'm waiting, and then how comes this like this five or six year old kid? And he walks up to me. I'm like, hey, how how are you? What's your name? And he tells me. And mm. then he's like, can I get a picture with you? And I'm like, what? <laughs> and so I get, I you know, I get a picture with this kid, and and she's like, he loved your short film. And I'm like, oh my <laughs> god, like, I don't care about winning now. It's like this kid loved it. Like that that touched my heart. Now I asked for the picture to get emailed to me. As of this recording, she did not. I, I typed in my email, but I never got it. So I'm wondering if it just never sent. And I really hope I get it. Like I would love to get that photo, mm. but I haven't. I haven't gotten it yet. So if anybody listening to this knows that lady, or if that lady somehow is listening to this, I need that photo. I just, I can't, that, that's too, too heartfelt of a moment for me to, to not be able to have it. So if anybody can help me, I need that photo. That's my, fa- that's, that, that is my favorite moment. Mm. Well, with that being said, is there any, any loss things that you would like to mention about G-Fest? Oh, okay, I, I will say this. This G Fest was different in terms of like I was always busy. I never really had a moment to not be busy. Right. But I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. And I would happily do it again. Mm. And I feel bad. There's people, Joe and Eric, MWA, the whole MWA crew, who I only saw fleeting moments. And there's people who asked to hang out, and I said, yeah, shoot me a message. It never, We never got to hang out. Mm. I really f- want to say that I'm sorry for not being able to make that time. I appreciate the interest. I appreciate the care. I appreciate the, the thoughts of being able to spend time with you guys. And I'm so sorry that I couldn't. I would love to make time, and I'd love to hang out. That's something that maybe we can do in at a future G Fest. I'm very grateful for everybody that send the kind said the kind words to me. And I hope that I wasn't a disappointment uh to anybody. I I'm very grateful, I'm very thankful, and I'm so happy that I got to spend the time I did with everybody. And I hope that next G-Fest I get to see you all again. I hope we get to take another photo. I hope we get to spend more time together. Well, with that being said, I guess there isn't too much else to do other than to transition into our outro. This is a bit of a bit of a short one today, it seems. <laughs> a little short. But yeah, I guess this this is where I can say hello. I'm Elijah, and I have a kaijun tokusatsu problem. Joking aside, I am Elijah Thomas. I am part of the rotating hosts for Monsters with Attitude. You can check us out on YouTube, where we do monthly live streams talking kaiju entertainment. You can also head over to Facebook and join our Facebook group. It's a great place to talk with like-minded people. I'm also a writer. I've written for GodzillaMovies.com and in Kaiju Ramen Magazine. Currently, I write for Kaiju United. My most recent article was about the upcoming new MonsterVerse director and his background. My writing has also been featured in the book Giant Bug Cinema, a monster kid's guide from Bear Manor Media, where I wrote about Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. Outside of writing and podcasting, I served as a consultant on the Titanic Creations, officially licensed Yungari articulated action figure. Go to titanicreations.com forward slash yungari to order yours today. Limited supplies remaining. I have also had the privilege to produce bonus features for SRS Cinema. I have worked on Yuzo, The Biggest Battle in Tokyo, Liverleaf, and I'm developing materials for the upcoming Blu-ray of War of the Ninja Monsters, Jiron vs. Gora. You can order all of these Blu-rays on srscinema.com. I'm also a filmmaker and YouTuber. You can check out my stuff on my YouTube channel, ET13 Productions, where you can see some of my short films and my old YouTube videos, along with the playlist that features all of my appearances on YouTube. I do plan on getting some new videos out soon, so definitely check that out. 
I also appeared in the Kaiju movie, a little-known film called Zillafoot from 2021. I made a brief cameo in the film as Skywatcher number two. It's got a rating of 3.7 out of 10 on IMDb, so if you want to watch more Kaiju, you can buy that Blu-ray on srscinema.com or the DVD from any major online retailer or just watch it for free on Tubi or buy it on Prime. You can also check out my action figure photography on my Instagram at ET13 underscore productions and my ex, the artist formerly known as Twitter. Thanks, Danny, at the same handle. And Rex, where can people find you at? Well, dear listeners, you can find me on YouTube at Rex Zeno, on Twitter at Rex underscore Xenomorph, and on Instagram, Rex underscore Zeno. And if you want to check out some of my writing, go take a look at the Tokusatsu Network. And as for the podcast... Don't forget to write us on iTunes that boosts our ratings and helps us get recommended to more people just like you. If you don't have an Apple device, which I don't blame you, I don't. That's actually a lie. I'm reading this off of a MacBook. You can write us on Spotify. To stay up to date with all things Kaiju Conversation related, head over to www.kaijuconversation.com to find our episodes, social media, news, and updates. Follow us on Twitter at K-A-I-J-U underscore C-O-N-V-E-R-S. If you don't have Twitter, you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Instagram. If you're like me before podcasting and you don't have any social media, lucky you. You can email us at kaijuconversation at gmail.com, all lowercase, all one word, you know the drill. And as always, we'll read your reviews on air for everyone to hear. We also have a Teespring store. Eventually, we'll have original artwork on there. But until then, you can sport our awesome logo on a t-shirt or maybe even a coffee mug. If you'd like to chat with us, check out our Discord server full of others that have similar interests to you. It's a great community full of great people. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you can be notified anytime we upload a video. Sometimes we post exclusives to the channel like bloopers for episodes or minisodes talking about news or other subjects. We also have an interview with Mechagodzilla designer Jared Krzyzewski on the channel. I definitely butchered his name, I'm so sorry. And a huge thanks to Rex for editing all of these episodes and all the other content we upload. His links can be found in the description below. Along with Rex, we'd like to give a huge thanks and shout out to Danny DeMana of the Godzilla Novelization Project for his amazing vocals on our theme song. You can support him by following him on Twitter at Danzilla93 underscore GNP or visit his website GodzillaNovelizationProject.com. And a huge thanks to Grattan Conwell from the podcast Giant Monster BS for composing the music for our theme song. You can support him by following the podcast on Twitter at Giant Monster BS or on any podcast platform under the, under the name Giant Monster BS. And with that, we're going to wrap things up here. So thank you guys so much for listening. And as always, please remember, life's too short to not talk big. Bye, guys. Bye. We are set, we are in debt There's nothing to sweat Life's too short now, baby Conversation Is not too big now, baby Conversation His name's Elijah, baby And also Rex now, baby We love those kaiju, baby And you will too now